Hey guys, what's going on here? It's Adam from the Tobacco Brothers. I'm Dave. So today we're shooting from Sir Louis Cigar and right here we have Hunter. So Hunter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, so, um, so I own Sir Louis Cigars here in Wilbraham, Mass. Um, I'm a cigar freak. Um, this is a passion business for me. This isn't about um, making money necessarily, although it is a business, so we gotta keep that in mind. But um, really, it's, um, it's, it's a passion for me. I focus on the boutique stuff. I focus on um, the stuff that really my customers are looking for. So uh, I have access to pretty much anything you can possibly want to cigars. Put a lot of work into uh, making friends and connections and um, just having a lot of fun, man. It's, it's great. It's a great time. Absolutely. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about what we're smoking today. So Hunter, seeing you're the guest, what are you smoking today? So this, uh, I've been going crazy about this cigar um, a little bit and on Instagram too. Um, this is the uh, Foundation Cigar Victorian, so it's the High Clear Castle Victorian. Um, it's a new cigar that just came out, I think a couple weeks ago. I've got it in a few sizes. I like the Churchill the best. Um, I love their whole line. I was just telling you guys earlier that I just think Foundation, in my opinion, there's just not a bad cigar that they make. Um, and this one, uh, I think, could be up there for Cigar of the Year. Um, don't know if they're going to listen to me at Cigar Aficionado, but <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Cigar of the Year for me, man. I, I'm really loving these. And my customers are like, I'm getting a lot of good feedback from it. Uh, I've got the Robustos uh, for people that don't want to spend two hours smoking the Churchill. But um, yeah, I love it, man. It's great. Nice. Do you, Remember, you heard it here first. Cigar of the Year right here. I, I hope so. <laughs> I'm smoking the uh, Crown Heads Four Kicks Limited Edition for 2019, and I am smoking the Cavalier Genevieve Black Label. So, Hunter, what got you interested in cigars? So, so I guess I'll I'll go back to I always like telling stories about we all, how we all got into cigars, right? Um, I was speaking to a cigar manufacturer a couple weeks ago, and we were just shooting the shit. And um, I forget, I think he said it's a fraction of 1% of the population smokes cigars, right? And even a smaller fraction of that smokes premium cigars. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're a real kind of odd group, small group. Um, and I think we've all gotten here in different ways, but most of us, um, I like to tell a story about the first couple cigars I smoke. So the first cigar I ever smoked, um, I was at a, fr a friend of mine was having a party. We were in high school. I think I was about 16 years old because I wasn't driving yet. And, um, you know, we were drinking, you know, those Budweiser's and whatever and doing stuff that 16-year-old kids shouldn't do. <laughs> Hopefully my kids won't do. Um, and somebody had brought Garcia Vega cigars. Must have bought them. At the time, you could buy them at, like, CVS. Yep. I don't know if you still can, but I don't think so. No. Um, so someone somehow found these Garcia Vegas, maybe they were their dads or whatever, and, um, and they were pretty good size. I wouldn't say they were a Churchill, but they were, they were a good size cigar. Maybe, maybe they looked more intimidating at the time, but. Um, so anyway, we were, I remember we were in my uh, buddy's uh, barn, his parents had a barn, and it was finished above like a living space, almost like a workout room. Okay. And uh, we were all in there kind of doing like a, a sleepover thing, hanging out, and of course we were hiding the beer in the, in the cigars. And, um, Anyway, we smoked cigars, drank beer all night, and then all went to sleep. And then the next morning, I remember my mom picked me up, and I felt like crap. I mean, you know, <laughs> between having beer and, and then having, I don't know how many cigars, probably two or three cigars, probably inhaled them too, you know. A lot of people, when they start out with cigars, they treat them a lot like cigarettes and want to inhale them. And I remember because I puked out the window as my mom was driving me home. She says, how was the party? How was your, you know, hanging out? I said, oh, pretty good. I don't feel so good. She probably knew. <laughs> yeah, she knew that they were probably doing stuff we yep. weren't supposed to do. And um, I, uh, I remember rolling the window down and just throwing up right out the window. Felt like total <laughs> shit. <laughs> so that was the first cigar I ever smoked. Surprisingly, I ever smoked cigars again. And then I didn't really get into cigars regularly until probably about three or four, maybe four years later in college. Um, a group of us um, wanted to smoke cigars, and I always like to be honest about stuff. I'd like yeah. to be, you know, uh, people say, why do you smoke cigars? Well, I'll tell you why. I, I started smoking cigars as a kid, 
was um, you'd see guys on TV smoking cigars. They were always the cool, rich guy, yeah. and you know, the villain or something, you know. And uh, I think that was um, part of the allure. Was it's just kind of like a cool thing to do, which seems really not cool to say. But <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's why, um, as a young man, I was attracted to like, oh, I want to be a cool older gentleman guy mm -hmm. and you know have the cigar so in college there was a group of us that um, we'd buy from one of the online stores I don't remember one of the magazines could have been famous could have been Thompson one of those and um, we would buy uh, I remember we'd buy uh, Teamos we'd buy uh, Baccarat we thought that was like you know really something special and cool and uh, and they were they're great cigars um, they're just not like the stuff we have today so so I started doing that in college, started smoking cigars uh, in college. We, of course, drink and have cigars. And um, it kind of, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't say it was an everyday affair, maybe once a week on the weekends or a couple times on the weekends. And then, um, and then kind of as I got a little bit older, you know, you'd, you'd have moments in life where you mm -hmm. would, I would do yard work and want to have a cigar to keep the bugs away, mowing the lawn or whatever, and putting plants in. And... Um, and then I kind of got out of it my, when my kids were born and all this stuff, you know. My wife's not a big fan of cigars. No surprise, a lot of, a lot of wives are not fans of anything that we enjoy. <laughs> so, no offense, sorry honey, you're probably watching the video right now, but... <laughs> um, Do you want me to bleep that Yeah, up? no, it's okay. She, she lives with me. She knows I'm a pain in the ass. So, um, but, uh, and then I'll tell you what got me into the premium cigar thing. About 10 years ago, um, I got into scotches and single malts. And I've always had a humidor. I've had a humidor. I've had yeah. the same humidor forever. And I've got multiple humidors now. And um, I got, I wanted to try a Davidoff cigar. And that's what got me back into smoking, uh, I guess, premium cigars. And um, I remember uh, I tried a bunch of different ones. And the one that I really liked was the Short Perfecto, the white label. It's a Short Perfecto. I could smoke it in about an hour or so. And it was just perfect for my palate. It wasn't too strong. Um, very consistent and enjoyable thing. Expensive cigar to smoke, but um, I wasn't smoking them every day. Yeah. Um, so that got me um, that got me back into uh, smoking premium cigars on a regular basis. Started building up my collection again. Started reaching out into different things. Started getting into the padrones. I got into the padrones um, when I wanted to try something a little bit stronger. Still love Davidoffs, still love Padrones. I smoke everything now. Yeah. Even smoke infused cigars, even though most guys say they don't smoke them, but they're the number one selling cigars in the world, but we don't so know who somebody, smokes them. Yeah, yeah who's buying them? Yeah, them. Nobody, nobody admits <laughs> to buying them. I admit to buying them and smoking yep. them. So, um, <laughs> so, the, um, so I got into, the, got into the Padrones and then had like a, just a nice, uh, I guess what you'd call um, expensive kind of collection, but I wasn't smoking um, every day, probably a couple times a week. So anyway, that's how I got into smoking the kind of the good stuff was um, the Padrones and the, uh, the Davidoffs and of course dabbled with some Cubans, you know. Um, and the fun thing with Cuban cigars is, um, you know, for all of us that have smoked Cuban cigars, um, the majority of them we've smoked are probably not real, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that pisses me off about Cuban cigars um, and, it's, and it's no fault to anybody that makes them in Cuba or whatever, the companies that make them legitimately, but I read something in Cigar Aficionado, they said it was over 90%, I think it was like 96%, I forget what it is, you could look it up. Um, let's say it's 96% of all Cuban cigars that are sold are fake. And um, I've probably had some real ones, I hope I have, and I, I'm sure I've had some fake ones. And thankfully, I'm not a guy that's like a huge Cuban uh, cigar yeah. smoker because, God, I'd be pissed paying a lot of money for something and it's, yep. and it's garbage. Yep. But hopefully one day that'll change. Um, so anytime I'm, I travel overseas, I'm going to London in a couple months, I'll go to the um, uh, Casa de Habano stores, you know, the yep. sanctioned stores by the Cuban government. Uh, supposedly, that's the safest way to buy Cubans right. that are real. Um, I bought them on vacation like everybody else in the Caribbean and Mexico and all this stuff. And the majority, I'm sure they're all fake. I, I, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, um, and I'm sure there'll I mean, be people that well, are going to... Well, I guess yeah. technically they are real Cubans because right. they're coming from Cuba, right? And I'll tell you, yeah. I was in Turks and Caicos last year with my family, researched like I do a lot of times before I go away, um, where to buy real Cuban cigars and all this stuff. 
and uh, go on the forums. People are saying, oh, this guy sells the real ones. They're great. He's a great guy, whatever. And I'm like, cool, you know, really researched the hell out of it. Went in there, spent, I don't know, several hundred dollars. Guy was nice. The shit was all in beautiful boxes, had the holograms, had everything on it. And uh, so I figured, eh, everyone says he's doing the right thing. Stuff looks real to me. What do I know about Cuban cigars? And um, so I bought a bunch, brought them home, smoked a couple while I was down there. They seemed okay. Some of the burns were kind of shitty. But that happens with any cigar. And I was on the beach too. So you never, beach, beach smoking is yeah. like the worst. Uh, I mean, I enjoy it, but from like a getting a good burn is almost impossible, at least in my experience. Um, and uh, anyway, I come home, do a little more research, bought a whole different bunch of brands. And uh, I think every single one was fake. Um, cut a couple of them open. Clearly wasn't, you know, made um, the right way. Yeah. A lot of broken up filler and shit in there. So it kind of sucks, but anytime I do travel, uh, I do uh, want to go to London. I'm going to pick some up to bring home for myself. Can't sell them, obviously, in yeah. my store. But from like a personal standpoint, it's just something fun to have yeah, every absolutely. once in a while. And they have a unique taste. Um, they, they do have a unique flavor to them. So anyway, that's... Uh, that's kind of the story with me and how I got into cigars um, and, and, and why I, I guess I started this business and you know just having fun doing it, man. Well, we nailed three questions. Good. <laughs> there we go. So, what's one of your favorite things about the cigar community? It's a great question. So, so I dove into this business. I knew nothing uh, about the cigar industry or from a business standpoint. So I guess I step back. I am a business owner. Uh, I own a construction company uh, and a real estate company. Uh, it's a 40 year old company, grew up in it. My father started in the 70s. Um, so I do business uh, every day. Uh, I always joke that I was a businessman at five years old because when the kids were playing with like, and I played with Matchboxes and G.I. Joe's too, and um, I loved it. But I'd also play these like weird games where I was like a, I don't know, some businessman and played with Monopoly <laughs> money and all this weird shit. And uh, I think I saw my dad being a businessman and um, so I probably was emulating some of that. And um, I started little businesses when I was little. I had a little girlfriend in like first grade, you know, and kind of like a, both had crushes on each other. And um, she would do origami. She'd make like these frogs and swans and all this cool stuff. And I was like, wow, those are cool. And I would like, show me how to make them. And I could make some of them and some of the complicated ones. I was just like, I don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> so, but all of our friends at recess and everything would say, man, those are cool. And then, so me being a, you know, whatever I was, six, seven, eight year old kid, I said, I could probably sell these and make money. What seven year old kid is worried about selling <laughs> origami, right? Yeah. So, so I, I came up with the idea of selling these for like whatever it was, a quarter, 10 cents, whatever it was, whatever you had to change for lunch money. Yeah. You know, it's kids back in, I don't know what they do now, they probably, it's all, they don't even use real money, but uh, we were kids, parents would give you some money and that was your lunch money, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I would sell these damn things for whatever, a quarter, 10 cents. I didn't make any of them. She'd make them all for me because she liked me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd take that, steal the paper from the classroom. So my cost of goods was zero, yep. you know? And then uh, it was all profit. And I get to keep all the money. Profit. Yeah, it was straight profit. So those are, that was my most profitable business. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I always liked um, business in general. I love it. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a crazy guy for sure. Um, I freely admit it, um, and it can be eccentric in some things. And um, but I like um, I, I like owning businesses. I like running businesses. I like to think I'm good at it. It's a mild success. And uh, so I wanted to jump into the cigar industry. Knew nothing about it, and that kind of actually attracted me. I actually liked the fact that I know nothing about this. I know a lot about the construction industry. I grew up in it, and very involved from an advocacy standpoint. And know people, and you know. The whole industry and this industry, I knew nobody. I knew I know to buy a cigar, that was about it, and yeah. smoke it. Um, and so I just had to reinvent the wheel basically. And I owned the building and I had an internet company, a little small internet company that leased this space for me when I bought the building about seven years ago. And he was a friend of mine, gave him a good deal on rent, and uh, he ended up uh, having problems. Um, you know, with his family and everything, so he had to, he, he couldn't afford to have the space anymore, and uh, so he left. The space was sitting empty for a couple years, and I was always like, you know, I should do something with the space. And obviously, it didn't look like this. I everything in here is brand new now, but um, helps when you own a construction company, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to do it. So, um, so I, long story short, uh, decided to put a cigar store in here, and. Um, 
I had other ideas, but this was the one that, um, we, sitting at a poker table, we played poker here um, pretty regularly. Got a group of guys been playing for probably about four or five years. And um, some of us like cigars, and we could never play in someone's house and smoke cigars. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of built it as a man cave originally that um, was at my office, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Because um, again, I love my wife, but she ain't gonna let me, uh, you know, smoke in the house. She ain't gonna let me smoke in the house. She ain't gonna let me hang out and play cards and do what all of us guys do when we get together, tell bad stories. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's kind of how it started. And then there's a brewery that started next door to my property here. And that's really the thing that pushed me over the edge to do it because I figured the way all these micro brews are, you get a lot of people that kind of will, there's a percentage of them that probably like cigars. In fact, I had a guy in here yesterday came in from the brewery next door uh, for a new customer and, and nice. just, um, yeah. So, so it all kind of worked out and then, um, and then I just, I just, I'm still learning. I love this. I mean, it's very new to me. This is, I, my store is about seven months old. I've been selling cigars for about seven months, uh, which in the industry is like infantile, you know? Yeah. Um, but um, I love the Instagram community. Um, We've which is actually where that's how we met that that's how we met and that's how I've met most of my customers the majority of my business believe it or not is internet so like I built this beautiful store and I still get a lot of friends and local people and word of mouth but you can't really advertise tobacco yeah. um, especially we're in Massachusetts we are probably one of the least friendly tobacco states in the country um, and they tax the hell out of us which yeah. we'll talk about because I like talking about that because nobody ever talks about it yeah I don't know why um, but I freely talk about it so one of the things I had to figure out, and so you have to get licensed, right? So you have to you have state licenses, I have local licenses, um, and there's tax. So the big thing on cigars is the tax, which varies from state to state. And actually, I'll send you the link to it. I don't have it on me, but I'll send it to you. I found this link, which I found interesting, um, of all the states and what they charge or don't charge in some states for tax on cigars. And um, cigarettes is always its own separate category, at least from my experience you know, throughout the country with this taxation. And cigarettes are taxed typically worse than, than cigars, um, which in my opinion is, 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 is a smart thing. I think cigars sometimes get painted in the same um, category as cigarettes, and they can't be any different. Um, I use the analogy of like, you can fly a jet somewhere or you can walk somewhere. They're both gonna get you there. They're both transportation, but they couldn't be any different. Yeah. And to me, cigarettes are completely different um, than cigars. Um, my mom died from smoking cigarettes. My father was a smoker since he was nine years old. Um, he's still alive, he's not in great shape. He's got COPD and all this other stuff. And um, cigarettes are bad news, man. Uh, but I'm not the type of guy to say, I never tell anyone, I personally don't like cigarettes. I grew up with two parents that were heavy smokers. Mm -hmm. And my brother and sister and I never smoked uh, cigarettes. I'm the only one that smokes cigars. And people always say, oh, you hate cigarettes. I can't believe you smoke cigars. It's a completely different thing. It just gets painted as the same thing, you know? Not to say that they're a healthy thing, right? But neither is sugar, neither is ice cream, neither is booze, yeah. neither is a lot of things that people enjoy. But for some reason, smoking um, um, cigars and tobacco in general gets kind of a bad rap. And I always get excited because, of course, pot is legal in this state. I'm not really a big pot smoker. I've smoked pot. Um, it's fine, it's great, somebody likes it, go for it. But you put on the news, everybody's excited about a new dispensary opening up. Yeah. Nobody wants to talk about a new cigar store opening up. They, if anything, they don't, even want to, they don't even want to know they exist. Yeah. I mean, my town won't even let me put a sign out on the main road. So uh, it's kind of kind of stinks, but um, but I get it. I don't want my kids to, to smoke and do the stupid things that I've done and you don't want to be a hypocrite at the same point, but um, it's too bad that cigars get really kind of wrapped in there. And I think that's where the, advocacy standpoint comes in and, and why I like to talk about it um, and hopefully educate people. We're never gonna turn the clock back. Correct. You're never yeah. gonna like, cigars aren't gonna like suddenly become taxed less, right? But if you can slow down the process of yeah. basically, a lot of people that don't like smoking just wanna get rid of it altogether. They don't want any of us to have cigars. Yeah. And it might happen in our lifetime. I sure as hell hope it doesn't. But, I hope not. Um, but there is a lot of people that wanna do that. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. So the taxes in Massachusetts is a 40% excise tax on me as a, as a shop owner. So what does that mean? So what that means is, let's say I buy um, $1,000 worth of cigars. 
I have to send the state of Massachusetts $400, okay? And it's paid out every quarter. So every quarter, I keep very meticulous records of what I buy. And then every quarter, I gotta add it up and then um, go on their website and send them their money, which it is what it is. It sucks, but that's the law. Um, so um, it's a 40% exercise. So I like to talk about it because some states, for example, to the north of us, New Hampshire, zero. And to just the south of me, I'm right on the Connecticut border, um, it's essentially zero. So they have a weird um, tax excise. It's actually a 38% excise. So you say, wow, that's very similar to Mass. It's only 2%. However, they have a beautiful little thing that I'm sure some lobbyists have put in there that says, with a maximum of 10 cents a cigar. Jesus, might as well be zero. Yeah. Okay. So Connecticut, because of we know about Connecticut shade and we know about the history of tobacco in Connecticut, they probably had much better lobbyists when these laws were made yeah. and probably still do today. And um, so to give you an example, when you go into a store in Massachusetts, and let's say you buy a cigar that's $20. All right, you say, oh God, $20 cigar, Jesus. Shop owner's making so much money on me and whatever. Well, I'll break it down for you. So if I'm selling you a $20 cigar, Here's the other thing nobody talks about in our industry. Hopefully, they'll probably get some people mad at me that I don't care. Um, they have MSRP. So all the manufacturers yes. say, this is a suggested price that you should sell for, okay? And some of them actually make us sign something, that a, a document that says if you, you're not allowed to sell it for less than that. So you can't even discount it under that. Uh, which in Massachusetts generally isn't a problem because Jesus, there's no money in it for me anyway. Yeah, so no I, can't, I can't sell a lot under MSRP. Um, but, um, so, so anyway, so let's say that $20 cigar, the way that it works wholesale is, it's typically, they double it. So if I'm selling it at MSRP for 20, I'm probably buying it at 10, or pretty close to 10, okay? So you say, wow, 10, you're making $10 on every cigar, that's great, I wish I was. Yeah. Massachusetts, you're not, because every, so take that $20 cigar that I pay $10 for, I gotta send the state of Massachusetts $4, so now that cigar has cost me 14, Right? Mm -hmm. And then I've got to pay sales tax on that $20 sale price to you, which let's say it's six and a quarter. I can't do the math in my head, but let's say it's um, 6%. That's $1.20 I got to add. So now that cigar is costing me $15.20 and change. So now I'm really making about $4 on a $20 cigar, $4.50, whatever it is, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Not a great margin as far no. as, as, as a business goes. Um, and it is what it is. I try to keep my prices as close to MSRP because I don't want to. Um, I don't want people to just buy online. Right. So a lot of companies that sell online, you'll look. They're from uh, Florida. Florida has a zero tax. They're from uh, Pennsylvania has a zero tax. They're from New Hampshire has a zero tax. So a lot of these mail order companies, they're not paying the same 40, 50 percent worth of taxes that somebody in Massachusetts might yeah. pay. So it really puts us at a really competitive disadvantage from a business standpoint. Which as far as the sales tax go, that's actually really starting to change too. Mm -hmm. Cause um, It is. Look, at, was, look uh, at Amazon and all those guys, you know? Yeah, and um, a lot, there was one state, I think it was Maryland, yep. started it. They're like, wait a second, we want the sales tax from all online orders. It billions of dollars going Absolutely. on. Absolutely, yeah. and then every other state saw how successful Maryland was with that. Yep. They're like, oh wait, we want a piece of that too. Let's right. let's all start going after start them. Start piggybacking off. Of and I believe it's either thirty-one or forty-one states have actually followed, wow. and now they're actually charging sales tax on all online orders. Yeah. So you know, um, from a brick and mortar standpoint, um, in Massachusetts, selling cigars, <laughs> it's a cool business, but it is not a lucrative business. <laughs> you yeah. know, um, and that's okay. This isn't how I pay my bills. Not how I make a living. Thankfully. Um, I'd be sleeping on that couch over there pretty much. I don't even know if I can afford that, but, um, but it's not the point. I do this out of passion. The money that we do make, um, I pour it back into the business to find and buy more unique cigars um, and, and do other things uh, with the business. With uh, We were talking about some of the promotional stuff we're going to come out with with Sir Louis Cigars, uh, some patches and shirts and hats, and I've got some coins. i got some other cool stuff. It's kind of part of that community. Um, and it's not about making money for me. And I think a lot of these guys that do this, it, they, they probably don't make a ton of money doing it. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, it's not all about making money. But um, 
so that's kind of the story. Hopefully a lot of people in the industry, I'm not pissing off by telling them how it works uh, to everybody else that's watching your video, but that's kind of how it works. And in some ways I want to tell a story so that some people don't say, I'm going to pour all my savings and chase a dream of being a tobacconist and open a store in Massachusetts. Don't do it because yeah. you'll lose your ass. You know, yeah. um, it's kind of like I have a friend in the wine business, you know, he owns a vineyard and bottles wine and everything and he says uh, forget the I'll probably screw up the way it's said but he says if you want to become a millionaire in the wine industry start with two million you know because uh, you're actually gonna lose a million but um, and I think the cigar industry uh, at least in our state in a lot of states in the country pretty hard to make a, a living doing it um, unless you're huge let's have a big scale if you have yeah. a huge lounge you have a bar so a lot of these places that have and again in Massachusetts it's almost impossible I don't actually there is one lady I know that has a bar with a smoking lounge in Massachusetts, and there's probably more than one, but I know of one. There's not a ton of them, but that's how they make money because the booze you make your much better money on yeah. it. So, so um, bigger profit margin. Yeah. So part of me kind of fantasizes, and, and if the business keeps growing the way it is, um, and it keeps making money and, and getting bigger, um, and the dollar amounts get big enough to do something, I would love to own a lounge with um, alcohol and, and cigars and uh, a place for people to hang out play poker, play chess, play whatever games you like to play or just hang out, have some arcade games, cool shit like that. I have a vision, but if it doesn't work financially, it can't make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Um, so, but you never know. You never know where it goes. Hopefully one day down the road I'll be watching this video saying, wow, I remember when, you know, um, I was just some little little cigar seller making no money. But yeah. um, but either way, I, I the cool thing with this business is I let it, I don't have any big plans of where I'm taking it and all this. I let kind of my customers take me where we're gonna go. And I just, it's so much fun because every week it's something new. Like look, at, we're sitting here doing this and a couple weeks ago, I didn't even know I was gonna be doing this. You guys yeah. reached out to me, yeah. you guys are doing this. I think this is cool as hell. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, that's the cool thing about it. I think you asked me about the industry and the people. Uh, and I do, I talk a lot. I already warned you before <laughs> we started. I do talk a lot, I hijack everything. But um, it, you, the people in the industry um, not just the customers are fantastic, but the, the, the manufacturers are great. Um, all the reps, anybody I've met in the industry, I use the analogy of like the car world. I'm a car guy, I've been a car guy my whole life. And I'd go to car shows, you meet guys with like a Bugatti Veyron and a you know, guy who's a multimillionaire with his Ferrari collection. And then you meet a guy that's got his you know, grandfather's uh, Camaro that's been handed down and uh, is a hard working dude. And, he loves cars as much as that billionaire loves his car collection. Yep. And when you all get together, it doesn't matter. He's a billionaire, and you know you're 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 whatever. You know you're a custodian at a, yeah. at, a at a school or something. You know, um, it kind of you you all that shit goes away. And cigars to me is the same thing, where um, all walks of life that enjoy cigars, we all can get together and talk about it. And um, it's a really um, that's the cool part of it. But the Surprisingly, the industry, at least so far, I'm sure there's some dicks out there, but I've only met good people. And, um, and, and the owners of these boutique companies I buy from are awesome. We talk um, and uh, we, we, I ask a lot of questions, so yeah. I'm, I'm somebody that, and I talk a lot again, but I do like to ask a lot of questions about stuff I don't know anything about. And, um, and these guys are great. They answer questions and they, they give you advice. And um, so, yeah, man, I couldn't be happier with this. It's so much fun. Um, we just wish it'd make a ton more money. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. that's really the only downside to it. Yeah, getting back to the whole online versus mm. brick and mortar thing. I think for me, that was one of the big reasons why I wanted to come down here yeah. and show people. Because it's like, especially where everybody's going to charge in sales tax. Yeah. Like, just get people to be like, oh, hey, this is a cool looking shop let's go, let's go check that out yeah and um, I noticed that with Massachusetts probably a year and a half ago that they started charging sales tax oh really yeah, online? With, uh, yeah. yeah um, with cigars international they okay. started charging yep. sales tax wow. I'm like yeah I really don't think they have one here in Massachusetts no I guess so, yeah they're just starting to hit everything so for me over the last year and a half I've been going back to more brick-and-mortar stores than buying cigars online because it's like all right they're charging the sales tax for online orders. Why the hell am I going to do that? That's why I was buying online was to right. avoid the sales tax. Right. So. Yeah. And you don't have the intimacy either. You know. Right. I, exactly. Yeah, I can 
I can tell you, you know, I've got this much. You right. know what I like, and yep. you always send me a nice, beautiful freaking package. Thanks, so, Dave. You know? Appreciate that. Yeah, and that's the part I love about it. I mean, I'm in the, the I've been in the consumer business with my construction company my whole life, so I deal with homeowners. You know, spending usually a lot of money on what they do, doing new kitchens and bathrooms. We do mostly upmarket stuff for that business, so people are spending a lot of money, and. Um, and I treat them really well and, and, and understand that. And it's not necessarily my business name. I like to think it's just who I am. But um, and the cigars to me, uh, I appreciate you saying that. I've had people tell me that, that they like getting my recommendations and what I think, you know, um, they would like for, for their palate. And everybody's different. And, um, and, I, and I've told you guys this, tell everyone, I smoke everything I buy. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't have, you know, a uh, million dollars to buy worth of cigars, uh, but I do have a lot of money invested in cigars already, and it just, I have no problem with it. Um, I just keep reinvesting into the inventory, but um, my focus is those boutique brands that you just can't get in every brick and mortar store. So what I want to do with this store, and what I've done, and what I continue to do, is bring in some of these cool brands and these things that, you know, I have guys tell me that travel all over the country, and they say, wow, I go into stores you know, 10 times as big as yours. I have a very small store here, and um, and your selection is better than theirs. I love people say that. I think that's it's so nice of them to say that. And and I, and I do the same thing. When I travel for bit for business, I go to different cigar stores, and some of them I look and I leave, and I say, Jesus, like, like this guy's been around 20 years, and I mean, not to like pat myself on the back, but I, I got better inventory than he's got, you <laughs> yeah. know? Um, and, and, and at least from what I want. Um, I don't. I have some big names, and there is some big names that I'll always have um, that you can buy at most good tobacco tobacconists. But um, the, my focus is always going to be on that small batch, what I call boutique <laughs> brands, uh, craft brew. I use the analogy of like the beer industry. Yeah. What we've done with the beer industry, you know, the last 10, 15 years, everybody wants to drink craft beer, you know. And I think the cigar industry right now. Is is has been in the same situation, but I think it's in the best um, for cigar smokers. I think we're in the golden age of cigars. I truly believe yeah. it because there's just so much cool stuff and um, and so unique. Um, and the cool thing with these small companies, um, they're probably in the same boat as me from like a retail perspective. They're not getting rich on it because I'm sure they got yeah. federal taxes and all this other crap they got to spend money on to even get the stuff here. Um, and it's a passion for most of them. Um, now the bigger boys, I'm sure, do quite well. They make good money, and God bless them, as they should. Yeah. Um, but the little guys that make these smaller boutique brands, they do it because they want to buy the premium tobaccos. They want to do unique blends. You know, you take a company. Uh, I don't know. Pick any large brand that makes tens of thousands of boxes every year. They can't buy that really niche tobacco because it just doesn't exist on that scale. Yeah. So these little guys come in and they can buy, you know, a couple thousand pounds of this, a couple thousand pounds of this, and make, you know, a couple thousand cigars or 5,000 cigars for their whole, their whole company um, and charge a little bit more because they have to and, uh, and make some really cool stuff for us to enjoy. Otherwise, we're just stuck all smoking the same flavored, you know, cigars that have the same tobaccos in them. Yep. So that, that's what I personally like about the boutiques is that they can experiment. And they all, I always say that you could close your eyes and pick a cigar here out and you're gonna have a good cigar. They're all good cigars. Yeah. Uh, I've heard you say that, that you've never had really um, too many cigars you don't like and I'm with you. There's very few cigars that all smoke and be like, Jesus, this is terrible. I, it just doesn't happen to me. Yeah. Um, and, and, but there's always those ones, those standouts that you're like, wow, this is something about it is so good. And everybody's palate's different. Like, I might love this and think this is Cigar of the Year, and who the hell am I to tell anybody that? But um, but to me, it is Cigar of the Year. And for you, you might have a different one, and you have a different one. You know, everyone has a different cigar that they would say, this is my favorite cigar. And to me, that changes over time, too. Yeah. Your palate's change, you know? Five years ago, I would have probably, maybe I wouldn't have liked this cigar. Or maybe I would have, who knows? But um, but that's the cool thing about the, uh, the boutique, small batch, um, world we're in. So people watching this, I'm telling you, you, you're living in a great time for cigars. There's so much cool stuff. Buy them, enjoy them. Uh, buy them from me, <laughs> uh, please, so we can keep buying more cool ones for you. Um, but uh, but seriously, yeah, there's just so much cool stuff out there. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, and the packaging, you know, I put yeah. some of these cigars out here to, to, to look at. Um, so, guys, this is actually going to be split up into two episodes, so 
what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a break right here right now and we're going to come back to you very shortly uh, i've got a couple more questions for hunter then we're going to show you some of his in inventory and you got anything to say about that dave nope all right so we'll catch you guys shortly thank Thanks. you yeah i have some customers that want to buy some cigars right now so <laughs> thank you